Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, and today let's talk about the 1980s. With its unique semi-translucent dial and instrument panel sub-seconds display, this watch weighs in currently at $280 or 219 pounds on pre-order. However, how has it performed in day-to-day -day use? Let's talk Flyboy. The case measures 43 millimeters in diameter with 48 millimeters distance from lug end to lug end. It's approximately 14.5 millimeters thick and features 22 millimeter lug widths. It's a two-hander with a sub-seconds dial beating at 21600 vibrations per hour and features hand winding, but no hacking. If the finishing is anything similar to the 1920s black case, this is an ionic plated black stainless steel case with a stainless steel case back and sapphire crystal on the front. As with all my reviews here on the channel, I like to start with the bad and then move on to the good before giving my final verdict on a review item. So let's tackle some of those bad notes. The crown on this model is extremely small. I would have preferred a pumpkin or onion shaped crown similar to its predecessors, but instead we have a bottle cap crown, something like that. That's not that easy to operate and or handle. With a movement that hand winds, this doesn't lend to a great experience in doing so. Again, I would have preferred a larger crown. The minute hand featured on the dial here is much too short. It barely passes through the hour markers you see on the dial and doesn't come close to touching the minute track. The markers it's trying to gauge. I would rather have a minute hand that ran over its minute track as opposed to one that doesn't even come close. It just helps with legibility. And speaking of, the blacked out hands, though aesthetically pleasing with this watch's overall design, get lost on the dial. I would have preferred they'd been outlined in white with black stems, so that they appear to be floating rather than taking on a complete vanishing act. Also, without going into much detail, I'm not a fan of the Cordura strap. It is extremely thick and not comfortable, but certainly usable. Now, I think a NATO style strap, despite the scale of this watch here, would have worked better with the overall look or perhaps a thinner canvas or Cordura strap. Now, with all of that out of the way, there's actually a whole lot I like here. Let's start by talking about the sub dial over at the four o'clock. It looks amazing. It's four o'clock position and execution are superb. The entire face is designed around this key detail and they pulled it off well. It looks like a gauge you'd find in an instrument panel of a jet, which is what they were thematically going for. And they nailed it. Just love the look. Also, the semi-translucent dial with its applied baton markers is handsome. With a zero hour at 12 and six marker opposing, there's a nice balance to the watch. Surprisingly, they've also managed to sneak in a day display that doesn't look out of place over at the three o'clock. Despite how much this dial face has going on, everything appears perfectly executed. Honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. Also, I love that you can see the date wheel peeking out between the nine and three o'clock and how it doesn't obstruct your view of the minute counter that rest opposite those hour markers. It's pleasing both aesthetically and mechanically to look at. The case has subtle beveling on the lug ends that could be overlooked in this black finishing, but they do help to slim the watch just a little bit. Also, the exhibition case back is a huge plus. I do love these displays, and it gives you a good chance to take a look at the Miyota 8218 inside. Now, before I close out the review and give you my final verdict on the 1980s flyboy here, I'd love to provide you all with a wrist shot so you get an impression of what it might look like on your wrist. I think what I disliked most about this Cordura strap was the fact that it's not breathable whatsoever. If you're going to do anything athletic, you're going to want to switch this watch off of this strap. However, here is what it looks like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. The 48 millimeter distance from lug end to lug end really saves this watch from feeling too large 
on the wrist, despite it being a fairly sizable pilot's watch. And I do like the look of it overall on my wrist. I'll also state that the black coating does help to shrink the scale of this watch, at least in appearance, on the wrist. Uh, one nice thing to note about that bottle cap crown is that it does not dig into your wrist at its scale, but still, I would have rather suffered a larger crown digging into my wrist than this extremely small crown we're dealing with. There are only a few real negatives holding the 1980s Centenary Flyboy back for me. However, all in all, this is a real unique watch with near perfect execution with its design theme, a watch that pays homage to the computerized dashes of modern cockpits, a piece that's a new take on the pilot style design. The 1960 and 1980s Flyboy will become available on Aviate's website come October 3rd. I believe the price at retail is going to be 280 pounds, so that's 60 pounds less. So if you want to shave off a few dollars, you can actually pre-order it now for the price I mentioned at the beginning of this video. If you're in the US or are using our currency, it's going to be roughly $280. I think that's a pretty fine deal. Now gang, if you found this video enlightening or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little bit like this guy. If you have friends, forums, or groups that are interested in picking up a new pilot's watch, we'll share this video with them first to get another consumer's opinion on a watch that's got a really interesting take on that Flieger style. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I do videos like this two or more times a week. So if watch content is your thing, feel free to slam that subscribe button. It lets me know that you are down for the show. And if you'd like to see my videos precisely when they air, you can hit the bell icon just next to that. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time.